Oh, what is this? Oh, that looks Why do horns and musical wow, instruments have this already. flared shape? Thanks to answer this question, about a year now. ago, I decided I would take this and scale it up to this. And I've never actually made something this big for my channel before, so as usual, we decided to make a smaller prototype model to see what we could learn about the challenges that would come from scaling it all the way up. So we started by creating a plaster mold with the right curvature, then you cover that with a gel coat, and then we put three layers of fiberglass and polyester resin. And then when you pop it out of the mold, you're left with this. Yeah. We're immediately struck that there is in fact something really special about this shape. So I'm gonna switch over from my lav mic to my shotgun mic not for this one, demo. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, but ten. The horn. You can even hear me whisper, which is great. How's this boring shit? This is really, this is really good. Proof that the curved shape of the horn had a significant effect on amplifying the input sound, but I still wasn't sure why. So now it's time to really scale things up to the big monster horn, which we did by applying all the same principles we learned on the prototype, and then we headed to the most oh, desolate shit. location we could find on Google Maps is to put it together. To hit. But um, don't worry, I built a tree house. Okay, chat, listen, listen, chat. Yeah, I might put filters on for the TTS. I can't do I don't see the intro. Wait, that is way bigger than I thought it would be. right on my shoulder. As you know, the base of the horn is what's responsible for creating all the sound. So to see what's inside, I thought it was only appropriate to open it with my friends Dan and Lincoln from the popular YouTube channel, What's Inside. And it turns out it's pretty simple. The key is this thin metal circular plate or diaphragm. So the air comes in like and passes around this diaphragm in such a way that it causes it to vibrate 110 times in a second, which causes a corresponding pressure wave to shoot out here and down the throat of the horn. So after a few hours, everything was finally set up and it was the moment of truth, since after eight months, none of us had actually ever heard it fire yet. And Lincoln hadn't even seen the thing because we made him wait in the car. This is the big reveal. You ready? Yeah. One, two, here it is. <laughs> is that pretty loud? Wow, that's so cool. Is that pretty good? <laughs> yeah. This actually isn't horn, it's that. Oh. Behind you, now you can look. Oh my. <laughs> but before we fire it, we need to first talk about how hearing works and what I eventually learned about why horns have that curve oh, shape. My. Let's say this jello block represents a volume of air molecules. If that horn diaphragm hits the jello molecules over here, there's a chain reaction of jello molecules crashing into each other until finally you see movement on the other side of the jello block. And this yeah, is where that, your eardrum is. So it moves back and forth at the same rate as the horn diaphragm because of all of these collisions of the jello molecules in between. This is called a pressure wave and it's how sound travels through air. And so if the horn diaphragm is hitting the air molecules at a high frequency or very frequently, our brain decodes that as a high pitch. That's so if the crash is happening at a low frequency like or that. less frequently, then our brain decodes that as a low pitch. Okay, but why the curvy horn shape? Well, that has to do with something called impedance matching. Basically, the horn diaphragm is very solid and this strong, sucks. and it pushes against the air, which doesn't offer much resistance. Watch it. It's not very effective, like trying to break a piece of paper by punching it. So without the curvy horn portion, as the jello diaphragm pull, moves back and forth, it interfaces with the air sort of like this. You can still see the jello okay. moving on the opposite side, just not that much, because the air is just too thin and weak over this small of an area. So to have a better interface with the air, you put a big curvy shape right after the diaphragm. You can see now your eardrum is moving back and forth much more vigorously, because the interface is so much better. So guys, guys, listen, horn, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. Listen to it. This is a multi-purpose machine. Because the interface is so much better. So you will never convince me horn, that the wifey did not have a go at it. But because you're conserving Come on. Sound. This makes sense because amplifying means you're adding power to the system and there's no battery or plugs at the curved section of a horn. It's passive. So by impedance matching, you give yourself a much larger area to push against all the air at the outlet, which makes for a more effective chain reaction of molecules crashing into your eardrum. And now the horn. Is that pretty loud? Wow. Is that pretty good? Yeah. This actually isn't hard, it's that. Oh. Behind you, now you can look. Oh my! <laughs> Like eight 
months of work, that's the first time we've actually fired off. And that's behind the horn. I could feel the vibration. Yeah. So chat, we're gonna when you guys, guys, when you guys ask the, where, where so many goes, this one we have to bite it to get the moxie mic. It's like on the other side. All right, so this is, we're about two football fields away from the horn. We have no idea how loud this is gonna sound here. All right, Ken, fire the normal air horn. Yeah, we could hear it. Now we're a little nervous because you could hear it decently well. All right, firing. <laughs> so for our second test, we drove about a mile away. And you can barely see the horn right here. All right, Ken, fire. No! We can still completely hear it. Yes. That's crazy. I mean, you can hardly see that mass. Is that a mile? Before, but it's still super loud. So Miles don't look that long when you're on a feel like that. I feel like. Go real far. So from a satellite view, this is where the horn was. Here was the first spot, and then the second spot. And then here was the third spot, two and a half miles away. Okay, so the horn is now super far away. I literally can't see it with my naked eye. It's so far away. Like, I can barely see it. It's right at the crest of the hill. There's a little tiny speck, and it's right there. We're going to do an experiment, and we're going to test the speed of sound. We should hear it on this walkie-talkie, and then some amount of time later, we might be able to hear it from this distance. Lincoln's gonna measure the time on his stopwatch. That's kinda watch, cool. And then we should be able to calculate from there what the speed of sound is. We're ready when you are. Okay, I'm ready. Wait for it. Holy shit, so slow, dude. How long? It took 11 seconds for the sound of the horn to get here. But we can still hear it so clearly. It's so clear. Like, I feel like we could go 10 miles further. Think about what this means. It took an unbroken chain of two and a half miles of air molecules, 11 seconds to all collide with each other until they made it all the way down here and bumped into the air molecules in our ear canals, which then uh, bumped yes. into our eardrums. So the sun was quickly going down, but really before bro. we went home, we wanted to try and break some glass. And if you want to break glass with what is essentially little puffs of air, the trick is to find out its resonant frequency. You actually know all about this if you've ever used one of these. I can make Eliza go really high with just a little force. Now if I apply that force at random intervals, it doesn't do very much. It's not fun, huh? Last no, time I saw one of those, dude, I but saw if I apply the that force equal to the timing out. of the natural frequency of the swing, those little pushes add to each other. <laughs> and so in this case, the resonant frequency increased our fun. But if engineers don't take this into consideration, it could lead to disaster, such as when wind gusts going at just the right rate destroy the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. It's also why soldiers don't march in unison when crossing a bridge. So if you measure the natural frequency of the glass with an accelerometer like this, then you just need to make sure your horn fires at that exact frequency or a multiple thereof. Or you can just change the natural frequency of the that. glass to match your horn by adding weights in the right spot. <laughs> Shout out to Lincoln and Dan from What's Inside for helping me out. We Wait, that's it? The title of the video is Largest Horn Shatters Glass. And we see the glass for like four seconds. I have been efficient, you made a chat. Imagine being one of the 0.3% of the species that survived all of the I was, I was and predators and managed to survive okay. up to the 21st Guys, century. Is the fact now that this is shattered glass play any role in the fact that it breaks easier or something? Television. Cause Lost isn't this called like shatter glass, something like that? Where it all shatters at once, whatever, when it, like, not, not to cut anybody? Okay, well. New moon with face, full moon with face, sun with face. Where's the question mark? Quarter moon face, quarter moon with face, crescent Guys, moon, this glass is designed moon, to break apart. Moon, waning gibbous moon, so it doesn't cut full moon, you. Waxing gibbous moon, quarter moon. Fuck off. Oh, you guys didn't know that? It was me and Moxie. Hey. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. dropped down, they weren't ready. Our aim was motherfucking steady. Yeah, steady. 
We were rolling up on that bitch, went scoot scoot. Scoot scoot. Four kills, first place. Yeah. Uh, uh fuck. Yo, 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 yo